Hi there, I'm Aton and welcome to Wix Fixer. So this is our second video about the Wix Data API. In the previous video, we talked about the get method, which allows you to retrieve an item from a collection using its ID. And the next one we're going to be talking about is the insert method, which allows you to add a new item to the collection. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started with this, I'm going to be copying over this code from the Wix API reference, and I'm going to be heading over to my website, and I'm just going to copy this right, uh, paste it, sorry, right over here. And you'll see that we have the import Wix data, which I already have up here on top. And just refer to the previous video if you are not sure what that is. Then here, I already got my collection ID, and I saved it uh, inside of a constant variable. And here, we are going to be using the insert method, which takes two parameters. One is the name of the collection. So I can actually just change this to my collection. Okay, and this is different because this is a variable, which essentially means that we're using the collection example collection. And if you're not sure how to find the collection ID, then also please refer to the previous video. Then here we have something called to insert. And to insert is an object where each uh, part of the object is a key, which is the field ID. Okay, so not the field name, but the field ID. And I'm just going to remind you to get the field ID, you go to the databases, and you go to, for example, collection example, and here you have all of your field IDs. Or you can go into the collection itself, but this is quicker. And here we have the values that we want to assign to those specific fields. Then when this code runs, it inserts a new item into your data set. And here it's important to check your data set permissions and make sure that whoever is going to be inserting this data into the data set has the correct permissions to insert. So if you, this code, when you're trying this out, is not working for you for some reason, I would go ahead to your data set, uh, to your collection, and check the permissions and privacy. Okay? And if, for example, here, can add content is set to admin, then this might create some problems for you when you are adding code to your data set. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to anyone just to make sure that we don't encounter any problems in this demo. And I probably need to save this, so I'm going to zoom out and click on Save. Excellent. Uh, so let's zoom right back in. And what I'm going to do now is I set up a basic form, OK, over here. And I have two inputs. One is the name input, one is city input, and I have a submit button. And what's going to happen is that when you click the submit button, we are going to insert a new item to the collection with this name field and city field. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to erase title because I don't need title. And first name from the Wix example happens to be the same name as my field for name. And I'm just going to change this from John to the value from our name input input field. So now the value of first name that we're inserting will essentially be whatever is written inside of this input field over here. And I'm going to do the same here, but this is not going to be last name. This is actually going to be city new. And again, I know this because I just did another demo before and I remember. Uh, but if you don't remember, then you can check up the name of the fields that you want to insert in your databases. And this is going to be equal to the value of city input. And then 
uh, when this code runs, then we're gonna get back the item from uh, the collection, the new item with all of the item information. So it's gonna have an ID, it's gonna have an owner, created date, updated date, and then the fields that we added. So that's gonna be first name and city new. And these first four are all created automatically by the system. So you don't have to set them in advance. And we're gonna run this code when we click on the submit button. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this all in a wrapper function, which is gonna be our event handler. And I'm gonna say, uh, save new person. And this is gonna be a function, as I said. And what this function is gonna do is it's just gonna run this code right over here. And I'm gonna just format that. Excellent, and we're gonna run this save new person code when we click on the button. So I'm gonna select our submit button. Uh, what did I call it? Submit button. Uh, on click. And here, instead of creating a callback function inside of the on click, I'm just going to call our save new person function. And now we're almost done. There's one more thing that I want to do, and that is that I want to display the first name and the city inside of these two text boxes as soon as we create the new person. So I'm gonna go over here and you'll see here that when after we do the insertion, we have dot then, okay? And dot then is uh, for used for handling something called promises. And basically what it means in plain English is that after you insert, then do something, something. So if we insert successfully, the then code will run. And if there is an error, then this code will run over here. And after we insert the item, so the first thing we're doing is consoling the item, which I still want to do. And the second thing that I want to do is I want to set the field. So I'm going to set the name display uh, dot text to be equal to item dot first name, right? Because this is essentially an object where each of the keys is equal to our field IDs. And I'm going to set the same for the city display. Uh, not the input city display. And that dot text is going to be equal to item dot city new. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and preview our code. Okay, so we have the live site here, and I'm going to add my name, Eitan, and my city is New York. And then I'm going to submit, and you'll see here that we have Eitan and New York. And if I go to the developer console, you can see here a new item was logged, not only with first name and city new, but with ID, owner, created date, and updated date. And then if I head back to the editor, and I take a look at the collection itself. So I'm gonna open up this collection. You will see that a new line of data has been added. And you can see here the first name is Aton. And if I zoom out a little bit and scroll, you'll see that city is New York, but you'll see there are also a lot of fields missing. So when you insert with only partial uh, data, then you'll see that there are some fields that are missing. Uh, and this is something that you need to pay attention to, that you're submitting all of the fields that you want for that new item. And as long as you submit one field, then a new item will be created. And if you're going to want to update this item in the future, then you're going to need this ID. And we're going to talk about that uh, in a future video. And I just want to show you this also on uh, my live site. So if I go to my live site and I refresh, then you'll see here that the uh, top item has been updated to Aton New York. And if I go here and I add a 
whoops, I forgot to publish my website. So let's publish the website with these updates. So I'm not showing the previous demonstration. Uh, and now here on the bottom, I have our fields again. Let me zoom in a tad. And so here, I'm just gonna say Bob. And you see here, the top item is 800 New York, right? So I'm gonna say Bob. And let's say Shanghai. And then I click Submit. So we have Bob Shanghai here. I know the item was inserted, but here we do not see Bob Shanghai yet. That's because this repeater was not set to refresh at a certain point. Uh, so what we'll have to do is we'll have to just reload this page, and then you will see that my top item is Bob Shanghai. And there are ways to refresh the repeater, but it's not specific to this demonstration, so I'm not going to show it right now. Uh, but if I was to refresh the repeater automatically, then you'd see this would change to Bob Shanghai automatically. So that is how to insert data into a collection using Velo code. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.